India's drug regulatory apparatus has been under question for a lot of reasons. But one reason that most of us tend to miss and a group of three people have now rightly pointed out are drugs which have apparently same names. They look similarly and not just patients, but even doctors tend to confuse when they have to say that which drugs work for which particular medicine. Uh, three people, Mr. Murli Neelakantan, Dr. Pat Sharma and Mr. Ashish Kulkarni came out with a very good paper on this subject on May 18th. Unfortunately, it did not attract as much attention as it could, probably because it was an election season. But we also tend to forget that these are the issues which matter and these are the issues which should have been discussed in an election season too. Uh, I have with me two authors of the pa paper, Mr. Murli Neelkanthan and Dr. Path Sharma. Path, if I could uh, first begin with you. Uh, when you talk about uh, look-alike, sound-alike drugs, uh, what do you mean by it? And if you could explain in a simple language to the readers, what, what are they? Thanks, Manjot, firstly, for inviting us here and uh, for helping us disseminate this information. Uh, so as the name explains itself, it's the drugs which look alike, either their names or as, as they are packaged. Uh, for example, uh, in chemotherapy, when we give chemotherapy, there are two drugs. Uh, one is called Wincristin, one is called Winblastin. Now, both the names start with Win, they end with I-N-E. So if somebody, like we have those puzzles where, uh, you know, the, the, the words are jumbled and still we are able to read the sentence because our brain can figure out the words based on the first and the last letter of the, uh, the, the sentence or the word. Similarly, these drugs also work like that. So they because they look so similar in the beginning and the end of the word that people can get confused. Even doctors can get confused. There are case reports from Delhi uh, where a patient was given Winblastin instead of Winchristin. Uh, the doses were different uh, for the drugs and the patient ended up in ICU and became very sick. So that's one part of lookalike. The other part of lookalike is when they are packaged and they look very similar in their packaging. Mm -hmm. And I can show you an example. Okay. For example, these two drugs. Now, it'll be very difficult for you to tell which one is what. But yeah. one is an antibiotic and one is a painkiller. So one is an antibiotic and another one is painkiller. One is a painkiller. Okay. Then I have several such examples laid down which, for example, these two drugs, again, very similar. Mm -hmm. One is metformin, which is given for diabetes, and the other one is levofloxacin, which is an antibiotic. So a diabetic patient could end up getting an antibiotic with their uh, with their diabetes being totally out of control because they are on some other drug. But what I would like to ask here is, uh, even if they look almost similar, but when doctors prescribe it, they would either prescribe it through a generic name or through the brand name. And usually a person would go to a pharmacy store with the prescription. And I believe that whosoever at the pharmacy store dispenses the drug would take care of the fact that this is particular drug that is needed to the patient. So how does it become a problem in that scenario? Firstly, not all pharmacists in India are trained as mm -hmm. they should be. That's one problem. The second is because they look so similar, anybody could get confused. And they are not, mm -hmm. it's not like they're stored very separately. I'll give you another example. I have three boxes. Now, even though the word, the, the name of the drug is written on it, but look at the look at the font, look at the packaging, and front, back, everywhere they look exactly the same. Mm -hmm. This one is uh, this one is uh, for, for diabetes, glimipride. This one is cetrazine, which is given for cold, and this one is domperidone, which is given for vomiting. Mm -hmm. And if I open and show you the drugs inside, they look exactly the same. Okay. So they are same on the outside, they are same on the inside. Mm -hmm. So anybody could get confused if they are in a rush. As we know, you know there will be a crowd standing, especially in government pharmacies, there will be a huge crowd. Somebody who is managing th those uh, pharmacies alone can easily get confused just because the packaging outside also looks the same, inside also looks the same. Uh, have, you, have you come across a case uh, where a patient uh, is supposed to take two medicines and both of them look same? So even if the pharmacist has taken care of the fact that he or she dispenses the correct medicine, but the patient got confused because of similar packaging yeah. and the other thing happened. We shouldn't have happened. So this is what inspired the paper. One year ago, okay. there was a lady, 65-year-old, who came to my center. I was treating her. 
she she had gotten medicines from some other prescriber at this time some other doctor had seen her the last time she came and i checked her blood pressure it was 200 by 100 normal is should be less than 140 by 90 her blood sugar was around 350 should be less than 200 when i asked her are you taking your drugs every day she's like yes i am taking one fourth of one tablet half of one tablet full of one tablet now she was illiterate all her drugs looked same, yellow, uh, white and circular, round and white. And we have put that picture in our paper as well. Those yeah. drugs are that lady's drugs. One mm. of those was a diabetic drug. One was a hypertensive drug. Another one for, was for her heart. Now she's taking okay. the wrong doses of all three because she's confused which one is one fourth, which one is half. So her disease is out of control. So yes, oh. this is also possible. Uh, Murli, if you could tell me, why do pharma companies do this? It, is it mere, I mean, merely, uh, is it just a coincidence? Is it ignorance? Why do pharma companies do this? There are many kinds of problems. One is they all want to ride on the goodwill of an earlier brand. Okay. So whatever is the first brand, you want to ride on the goodwill of that. So the first brand for the drug has set up a market for it, has set up a name for it, so if your name is close to that, similar to that, then it is easier for the doctor and the pharmacist to remember a substitute, a generic substitute, okay? So a good example of that is during COVID, we had molnupiravir. Yeah. There are more than half a dozen similar drugs in the sense they're all equal, right? Supposedly they're all molnupiravir. They all start with molnu. So you have a set of drugs manufactured by different companies, all beginning with the word Molnu. Mm. This was brought to the attention of the courts and said, this is a really bad idea. So the court said, yes, yes, yes. It's a bad idea. But they said that, and this is the problem with how courts work. It was a trademark problem. Okay. And they said, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very bad idea. But the trademark allows you to genericize Mall new. Okay. So everybody can use mall new because if, if you could if you could just explain it this a bit, how does the trademark work and how does it help to generalize? So the brand is a trademark. So mm -hmm. the first person who launches a brand for that drug starts off by using the chemical name somewhere in it. So simple one is prin, aspirin, crocin, metacin. Originally they all started as aspirin. Mm -hmm. And you saw several variants of that. Mm -hmm. All of them have now become paracetamol. That is the second problem. That what you thought was aspirin is now paracetamol. So metacin is not aspirin. Crocin mm -hmm. is not aspirin. So because the name got very, very popular, people used mm -hmm. that as an asset. Everybody says okay. IP is an asset. So trademark became an asset. And you can use the same trade name for some mm -hmm. other drug by just switching it. So, first so problem, are you we, saying that this is this is done in bad faith by pharma companies? I mean, they are not doing it out of ignorance. They are it's just bad faith behavior. No, 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 I don't know what the good faith or bad faith argument is, but the law is that you should not use the chemical name. Okay. Any part of it that is the law. It is there in the Trademarks Act. Mm -hmm. The Supreme Court in two thousand one said, please do a full trademark search before you register a drug and get it approved. So if I try to simplify, simplify it for readers, you mean to say that the Supreme Court said, if you are launching a new drug in the market, you yes. should check first whether yes. a drug with a similar name exists in the market already so that there yes. is no confusion. Correct. But that is not being followed, you say. Correct. The Supreme Court judgment came out in the Cadilla case in 2001. So it's not a recent problem. And we've seen with the cancer drug that Bart will tell you about, which was also a trigger for our paper. Mm -hmm. It is the exact same name. It is not even similar as you saw. So it does not look alike. It's literally identical. It is the same brand and we have found examples of that. The mm -hmm. same name mm -hmm. used by two different companies for two different drugs that just cannot be anywhere close to in the same prescription. But mm. Yeah, but so it's a reality. Yeah, it's 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 we have mentioned in the paper also. It's called Linamac. Uh, one is a diabetic drug with that brand name. The other one is a cancer drug with that brand name. Have, having same exactly brand. the same brand name. Exactly the exactly same. Exactly, both towards same. And the same font. 
So in this case, even how would a pharmacist, you know, who's would, dispensing the medicine would be able to distinguish? He will not. And that is where the first problem is that the, even mm -hmm. if the doctor writes a prescription with this brand name, mm -hmm. because in India, the doctor in a prescription does not also write the diagnosis. So it yeah. is just a script with a list mm -hmm. of medicines. Mm -hmm. It is not a full diagnosis to say, these are the symptoms. This is my diagnosis. This is what I want to treat. And therefore these pills, the pharmacist looks at it, looks at the brand, and then it's up to him which of the two he gives you, right. which of the two drugs he gives you. And then the patient has to figure out, is this the right drug or not? And you can't do it unless you take this trip back to the doctor. Mm. You can't who, fix who, this Who problem. will see so, a kind of the ingredients of the medicine, right? And then tell you whether the drug is correct or not. Mm. Correct. But if he asks you on the phone or if you tell him by WhatsApp, uh -huh. This is the drug I took. Uh -huh. That's right. That's the right drug to take. So this is this so could be life threatening. There. This could be life threatening. It is, and we have found examples of it. So this is not some hypothetical situation. It has mm -hmm. actually happened, that, and that is how we, thanks to a on, an oncologist, is how we came across this drug. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, the two drugs which have the same brand name, the cancer drug has been launched. After 2001. So it oh, should have after done the, the Supreme Court judgment. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, last five years. So it's not even mm -hmm. that old. So mm -hmm. they are not following this system. The drug regulator has approved this brand name for a cancer drug, despite the fact the Supreme Court says you must do a search report. Mm -hmm. And why would so, drug regulator do so? I mean, no, no, the person applying has to do a full search report, a trademark uh, search report while uh -huh. handing over the application for the drug approval. But okay. clearly this has not been done. And this is so, a simple search. It's not yeah, a complicated so, thing, right? So Identical. It's, so it's not the job of drug regulator to do any checks on this? I mean, is there no power in the law to do this? I mean, of course, when anything is provided by way of information to the drug regulator, they support to check. Yeah. <laughs> to, to say that there needs to be a special power to also have to check when you're approving something and something has come by mm -hmm. way of application, it's mm -hmm. beholden to a statutory person to actually look at it, read it, and see if a search has been done. What mm -hmm. are the terms on which the search has been done? What mm -hmm. terms have you searched for? And what is the search mm -hmm. produced? Mm -hmm. And frankly, even if the applicant hadn't done it, all of those brand names are with the drug regulator. Yeah. So how hard can it be for you to search on your own database? So it was just a control F that the drug regulator had so to do. So simple. So simple. Mm. And why would not the drug regulator do that? I mean, how do we understand it? I mean, please, when it is many years now that I've tried to figure out why the drug regulators in India do what they do or don't. Mm -hmm. It'll take a few mm. more years for me. Okay. Uh, Parth, if I could come back to you, there is another problem, you know, that you, I mean, that all of you have cited in the paper, uh, which you say, you know, for example, you say uh, molunomize and molonator, they are manufactured by the same company, which is hetero and marketed by the same company also, which is Torrent, uh, but they are two different drugs, yeah. right? So Parth, if you could say, how serious is this problem that two different drugs with almost similar names, manufactured by the same company, marketed by the same company, and yet they exist. I mean, it's a very serious problem. I think Murli wants to say something first. Please go ahead. Yeah. So this is not a medical problem. This arises because of how drugs are marketed. So mm -hmm. if you have two different brands, you can price them differently. Although in this case, they are not priced differently. You oh, can prices them... are also the same. Prices are also the same. So if you go to 1MG or any of these sites, we have checked, the prices are also the same. What they can do is put them through different channels at different prices. So they can give it to hospitals at a particular price. They can give it to individual pharmacies at a particular price. They can give it to you know doctors who sometimes also dispense drugs at a different price. So by having different trade names, trademarks or brands, they can use it to price differently to distinguish amongst channels. So mm -hmm. that is the reason, there is no medical reason for it. The only reason to do it is to be able to make money differently to different brands for exactly the same drug. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's, it's a situation when 
the company decided deliberately to confuse yes. the consumer or the one who is consuming the drug uh, with having almost similar names for two different drugs. And I mean, this still exists in the market. So Parth, how is this a public health problem? I think the first assumption that, you know, I feel you are making is that pharma industry is there to do some good. <laughs> I mean, that's the assumption that we have to get rid of. They are obviously there for a profit. And uh, whatever they have done so far, from, uh, you know, if you go thousands of years back, <laughs> from whenever drugs were invented, since then it mm. has been, it's been an industry now and more, uh, it's called a medical industry. Mm. It's it's not, it, it's, it's a source of revenue for the pharma companies. So that's what mm -hmm. they all think about. They don't think about, oh, somebody will die because of this. And mm. when we think of a country like India, where the population is 140 crores, mm -hmm. you know, if one person also die, the number is still 140 crores. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so uh, I mean, what I asked Murli earlier, is this simply the bad faith behavior? I think you have added to it. It's just not the bad faith behavior, but there is profit motive behind it. No yeah. matter even if it that comes at the cost of, you know, somebody's life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. The, the other thing uh, that you cite in the paper is uh, the issue of different drugs having exactly the same name. The, you have given the example of Medzor. So the, if you could just part, elaborate uh, on this a bit, w what is this problem exactly? So there are two different spellings of Medzol also. One is M-E-D-Z-O-L mm -hmm. and one is M-E-D-Z-O-L-E. -E. Mm -hmm. Now the M-E-D-Z-O-L is again for two dr different drugs, very different drugs. One is our famous Pantop, the Pandy, mm -hmm. which is famously taken for any, any stomach pain. Mm -hmm. uh, that is one pantoprazole, which is the generic name, pantoprazole, the drug name, which is medzol. The another one is metazolam, which is actually a drug which is given to induce sleep, which is used by anesthetists commonly. It's a sedative. That also has the same name as medzol. Now imagine somebody having gas, but then the person ends up sleeping for uh, 24 hours because they took medzol mm -hmm. rather than pantoprazole. Mm -hmm. Other yes. M E D Z O L E are another set of drugs entirely. One is metronidazole, which again is like an antimicrobial. The mm -hmm. other one is etraconazole, which is an antifungal. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to treat somebody's, uh, say, diarrhea, amoebic diarrhea for mm -hmm. metronidazole, and you end up giving them antifungal, mm -hmm. they are suffering still from diarrhea. Mm -hmm. And now they might have side effects of antifungal if they take it for too long, which could be even liver injury and other problems. Mm -hmm. so firstly, their disease is not getting sorted, and then you're giving them adverse events, which you know, extra ones which they don't even sort of should get the drug. So you have you have come across such uh, you know patients in your yeah. in your practice. Yeah, yeah, I have. So mm -hmm. the because again, like I mentioned, you know, the pharmacists in India are not trained as mm -hmm. they should be. The majority are not. Uh, so and I'll I'll just interrupt you here. Uh, when you say majority of pharmacies are not, I mean, do you say have, have you gathered any? I mean, this is a common understanding, but have you gathered any evidence to suggest that most of the pharmacists are not yes. adequately trained? Yes, yes, we have actual reports. So uh, even in the press, we have several reports where the FDA has gone checked on medical stores and found that they don't have trained pharmacists. Mm -hmm. So we have large numbers. You know, we're talking hundreds. So this is not mm -hmm. two people went to you know, one city, one locality and found. Mm -hmm. We have found hundreds of such examples. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, you know, do we know exactly the total number in the whole of the country? No, but mm -hmm. there have been large number of cases which you, the FDA itself has mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to find out and tell us what the numbers are. So we definitely know that we don't have a pharmacist, trained pharmacist in every store. That much we know. So, you know, if I try to connect the dots, Point one, there are no, I mean, there is a lack of adequately trained pharmacists. And point two, there is very much a possibility of such a mistake happening at the pharmacy also. And if we connect the dots without a trained pharmacist, such a medicine is being dispensed, which obviously means catastrophe for the patient, right? It goes wrong at every place, right? So the first problem is uh, the drug and the label and the way it looks. Mm -hmm. So... The first problem is there. That is the reason the pharmacist can't get it. That is the mm -hmm. reason that the prescription, the medicine and the pharmacist are not aligned. Then you have the patient. So in every one of these four stages, there is a problem that is caused mm -hmm. by the brand name. To put okay. it very, very bluntly, if we didn't have the brand name, we wouldn't have had this problem. 
so part you were you know saying something about the real life experience that you have had on uh, this uh, which about which burli is talking about i mean there are multiple examples uh, most commonly the ones that have come across are because of local like drugs uh, mm -hmm. there was like, another patient again the drugs i can show you they looked exactly like this one is a drug for diabetes glimipride yeah one is tell me certain they both look exactly the same so the patient was dispensed glimipride which is a diabetes drug even though the patient had hypertension now the mm -hmm. dose of glimipride was 4 mg which is a very high dose which the patient received now somebody who does not have diabetes takes this drug their sugar might suddenly drop and they might die mm -hmm. if somebody does not have diabetes Uh, mm -hmm. so at at normal sugar level if you take 4 mg of glimipride you will end up in the emergency of some hospital uh, mm -hmm. so i mean that's a big problem and you must have come across cases like this yeah yeah definitely i've come across a lot mm -hmm. of cases like this uh, mm -hmm. i've been in the emergency for one year where again drug confusion led to uh, either overdose or side mm -hmm. effects currently mm -hmm. in my the, the primary health center that i work at i see these cases quite often where today itself you know by mistake one patient received a, a drug for vomiting rather than allergy because they looked exactly the same mm. so we just caught the patient just outside and said okay no we have dispensed the wrong thing to you can you please come back we will check it once again and so this we, this happened today itself this happened on today. the day when hmm. so it's it's that common yeah. i mean it's it's not that you know these are not isolated incidents but these are very common incidents right uh okay Manjur, uh, that was the reason we wrote the paper was there were so many incidents mm. and nobody's written about it when we tried mm. to find a list mm -hmm. we couldn't in the rest mm. of the world these problems would have been caught in some study there must be a regulator saying you know somebody comes back and tells us this is a problem there is vigilance about this mm -hmm. and we've spoken to many doctors so you know part has these examples but if you speak to any of the general practitioners in any of the hospitals There are several of these examples. So this is not something new. It is not something that happens infrequently. It happens every day in every hospital. That's how frequent it is. So you know when when you're saying that this is very frequent, I know. I mean there are no figures as such to quantify. But is it possible for you, a part, to say what could be the scale of this problem? Because there have been no studies, and therefore we can't say about the scale. I mean, what do you say about this, or what does Path have to say about? It? There is a study from UK. So, so I'll just give you a comparison. Say they they did a study in UK in which they figured out that out of one billion prescription, this error was seen in two point two million, which is twenty two lakh prescriptions, okay. which is a huge number. for a country like mm. india where uh, you know prescriptions most often don't even exist where yeah. the person is directly going to the pharmacy and the pharmacist is the one advising drugs or if person has a name in their back of their mind saying pehle you know i had taken this drug iska naam shayad ye shuru mm. hota hai ye khatam hota hai types mm -hmm. so lead to even more errors and so whatever numbers we have there is one study which was done in maharashtra mm -hmm. which said that the the problem is around 3% So in a big hospital, three okay. percent of the prescriptions are having this error, which again is a huge number. And I'm sure three percent is quite underreported, considering not all the hospitals in the country have a hospital information management system. Uh, so you know, just 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 to seek a clarification here, this three percent data which came from a Maharashtra hospital, you're saying, was this a big corporate hospital? This was a private, big hospital. Okay, why I ask this question because if three percent is the you know I mean a number that you are quoting for a big hospital where people are supposed to be you know highly literate and knowing all these issues, ah, uh, am I right to interpret that this problem in especially in you know down to the level of villages, primary healthcare centers, the scale of the problem there would be much more as to what we see in in big hospitals in the city. I mean, if you have gone to a so-called Bengali doctor. Or you know, famously called quacks. The, the colloquial term is Bengali doctor in Delhi, at least. Yeah. They don't even dispense the packet. They dispense drugs yes. in, in newspapers. So the scale of the problem, you know, we can't even imagine. I I have seen that, and I questioned the doctor why he was doing so. He said, "This is what I have been doing since years." So yes, no, but I even have, qualified I doctors. Seen. Sorry. So just, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was an MBBS MD doctor. Correct. I, I have seen that in Bombay, in. In not some remote part of Bombay, this is Napiency Road. Doctor 
with a well-known doctor, with a well-known clinic will give you little packets with blue, green, white goalies in them. And that's about it. We have no clue what those drugs are. So we're not even going there. The problem is not only in rural areas, is not only amongst the chief doctors. It happens even in high-end localities in Bombay. This is Nepensi Road, which clearly is not a poor area by any mm -hmm. stretch of imagination. The doctor's handing out little pills in little packets, and that's how it is. So we're not talking about that. That error is you know, at an exponential level. We're not even talking at the error where the uh, doctor actually knows what the drug is, writes the proper drug, gives it to the pharmacist, and it goes wrong there. What if the doctor himself is writing the brand name and it leads to two different drugs? That is a big problem. What happens if the doctor is not spelling the whole name in bold letters? Then what happens? So the problem arises at that level that if you write the prescription with the chemical name correctly, then we solve all of these problems. In fact, that is one of our suggestions. It's been a suggestion in a paper I wrote 10 years ago as well to say that you know these brands are quite unnecessary in the rest of the world we don't use these brands why mm -hmm. is it that you know even if you look at your vaccine mm -hmm. it doesn't elsewhere in the world not one of them use the word kovi covid kovi none of that why mm -hmm. because they yeah. can't use any term that relates to the product the chemical name you look at okay. any drug you take mm -hmm. any drug mm -hmm. so for take example any you're drug saying elsewhere uh, in the world so, for example, if you are saying COVID, right, the yeah. name of the vaccine is either Covaxin or Covishin. Right. So, anywhere in the world, they would not use Co in their uh, the brand names and the name of the vaccines are different. Yes. Okay. If you take paracetamol, mm -hmm. nowhere else do they use the word para. Mm. They don't. And para signifies uh, what? No, any part of the name paracetamol, right? Okay. So they don't use any part of the name paracetamol. It's a scientific, name, scientific name of the drug it will come. Because para is like a scientific in, in chemistry. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. So we don't use it for anything. So if you take any drug, remdesivir, mm -hmm. sofosbuvir, we don't use those terms in the name of the drug. Which are related to the disease. Which are related to the chemical. Oh, okay. Okay. In the rest of the world, that is how it is followed. In so India, what, we do the uh, if, exact if I, opposite. So what, what I'm trying to understand is the chemical, the name of the chemical should not figure ideally in the name of the drug. Is that right? That is what the law says. Hmm. The trademark law says that you should not do it. Mm -hmm. But we continue to not follow that. So mm -hmm. that's why we gave you the example of molnupiravir. Mm. Okay. How can you use molnu? Mm, yeah. So, you, you know, you're, you're talking about law. I mean, we have laws. Yeah. What are those okay. laws? What are those laws? But we this have the Trademark Act, should. which mm -hmm. says you shouldn't. We have the Drugs and Cosmetics Act, which says while giving approval, you should think of the drug regulator needs to approve also the name. Mm -hmm. So those are the two ways in which we should not have got into this problem. Mm -hmm. But we continue to do it. So mm. the examples we are giving you are from recent are not from 20 years ago we so give why, examples from today so i mean there's a common understanding as to why the laws are not implemented but is there any speci any anything specific that you can point out for example why is this trademark act not who, who is supposed to implement the act and why is not being implemented i mean about drug controller i don't want to talk about much most of our viewers would know that there is a lot to be done when it comes to drug regulation but what about this uh, trademarks act so the law has progressed only because two brands have fought over it. Okay. But that doesn't solve the problem, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is not a private matter between two brands. This is a public health issue. It's a public law issue. Who, who's supposed to implement this uh, act? I mean, if I have committed a violation of this act, who would come and, you know, sort of Nobody. take so action? Under the Trademarks Act, the, mm -hmm. it is between two private parties. Okay. So they have to go to court. So they go to court alleging that, you know, your brand looks like my brand. Okay. And it's not an important enough matter for the court to take up seriously, right? Mm. This is like okay. saying your, your brand looks like Louis Vuitton. Your mm. brand looks like Rolex. Your brand looks like something else. 
So for the court, it is seen as a commercial issue between two parties. Hmm. It is so the not courts seen as a public are, health issue. I mean, I can say perhaps these are this is true about other issues of science as well. Uh, and but particularly about this issue, courts are not properly equipped to handle these matters. Is 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 this right? No, actually, that's not the problem. The courts don't seem to go to the heart of this. Mm -hmm. When they do, as in the Kadela case, they give directions to the drug mm -hmm. controller to say this cannot happen. Mm -hmm. But it is completely ignored. I'll give you a better okay. example where the courts have really failed us. And this is the case of Viagra. Now, Viagra is different because, again, think of it, okay? Viagra has nothing to do with the name of the drug. Yeah. The chemical name of the drug is not Viagra. So it's a made up word, which is how a brand should be uniquely made up word, Viagra. If this is India, so instantly after Viagra becomes very, very popular, we have number of brands which use part of that. So you have Penagra, P-E-N-A-G-R-A. Okay, and they look the same as Viagra. So it's a blue mm. pill with a rhomboid shape. Okay, that is what made Viagra famous, right? Yeah. And the court, rather than saying, listen, you can't have the same name, said, no, 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 it's okay, you can have the same name. What did they go after? They went after the shape and color and said, you can't have blue rhomboid, which is a pointless exercise because mm. nobody sees the pill when it is in a box. Yeah. So even under trademark law, the courts have got it completely wrong. Mm. And you've allowed these other drugs to look like Viagra on the box. Mm. And say, no, so no, 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 what, what I there. understand is, I mean, as far as the Trademarks Act is concerned, it's up to courts and the two parties. And the right. other agency which sort of you know can address this problem is the drug regulator. Right. Now, drug regulator is not doing it. Is it right. not equipped? Is it not interested? I mean, I don't know whether you want to speculate or not. I don't know. Uh, it is easy but, to do. Yeah. So it is very difficult to speculate why they are not doing it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Path and Murli, you both, maybe Path can come in first. Uh, what do you see the solution? I mean, apart from the regulatory apparatus, where do you see the probable solutions for this? I mean, being a doctor, I would say the first solution is to tell doctors to change their practice. Uh, Okay, fine. You can't force every doctor to prescribe generic, to write generic names in their prescription. You write the brand name, but at least in brackets, write the, the generic name. Uh, okay. So that could be one possible solution because ultimately, mm -hmm. you know, doctors are attorneys for the poor. Rudolf Virchow has said this. Mm -hmm. uh, so our responsibility, our ethical responsibility is to take care of our patients. Now, if uh, the first thing anyway we are taught when we become doctors is first do no harm. And the yeah. first is more important than do no harm because our responsibility often is to not just take care, but not cause any harm uh, because of what we are practicing. Mm -hmm. So I think first step is for doctors to at least mention the diagnosis on their prescription. Mm -hmm. Ideally, they should write everything uh, the way the guidelines. That's, that's hardly mentioned. I mean, diagnosis, I really see don't, many of the doctors not mention. Or if now, you know, with, with the, the great digital India that we are in, at least mm -hmm. digitize your prescriptions. I mean, that's the least yeah. you could, at least in the big hospitals. The smaller mm -hmm. ones, you know, anyway, they'll be out of the control of any regulator. Mm -hmm. Any, It's not possible to control the, the village doctor sitting there or uh, some mm -hmm. clinic in, a, in the roadside. But at least the big mm -hmm. hospitals can sort of digitalize their prescriptions. That'll be the easiest thing to do. But, you know, this, this, this goes back to that debate which has been going on for years, generic versus branded. And it's 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 not easy to say which of the two sides of the debate is you know kind of more useful. Uh, no, so... no, no, no. I think that's a different debate. Mm. This is what is the name of the drug you're going to write in your prescription. This mm. has nothing to. So when we when part says write the generic name, it is the chemical name we are talking about. Okay. Okay. We are saying write paracetamol. Please mm. don't write crocin or uh, mm. or uh, metacin or calpol. Don't write mm. the brand. Now, as, mm -hmm. a doctor, Ellis, yeah, as a doctor, if you have more faith in one brand, go mm -hmm. ahead, write the brand name. You know, nobody mm -hmm. can stop you from writing the brand name. The laws came in, were uh, taken back because of protests, but at least write the generic name in the brackets. You might be trusting mm -hmm. one brand more for various reasons, but mm -hmm. that should not stop you from writing a generic name.
and that i mean writing generic name can help a lot because then you know even the pharmacist will be able to distinguish maybe a common you know patient would not be able to but at least a pharmacist would be able to distinguish it right uh so you... that 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 only solves i feel the sound alike problem yeah the yeah. look alike problem still persists yes. and for mm-hmm. that whether it's the doctor or the pharmacist dispensing somebody has to educate the patients this is your no, but uh, but well you know if if generic name is written then the look alike drugs can also be distinguished isn't it 10% of the people in india speak english okay and how many of them uh, can read the complicated drug name Hmm. But the yeah. pharmacist can. In the train, uh, I'm trained once. I'm talking about. I'm talking about the patient. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 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 Kamla Bai coming to me, who hmm. is uh, from remote areas, has never educated in her life. Hmm. She can't read the drug name, even if she can sign in English. I'm sure she hmm. can't read the drug name. Yeah. So for her, getting a packet in which there is a sun, there is a star, there is some moon to show her, you know, this is this is your drug hmm. for hypertension or some symbol hmm. to just sort of so she can identify. Mm-hmm, so still mm-hmm. look looking alike. Yeah. So somebody has to spend that much time, an extra two mm-hmm. minutes with the patient to explain mm-hmm. to them that this is your BP goli. Hai. This is your sugar medication. This is yours. So don't get confused. Mm-hmm. So, but all works. of this can be solved without doing all these things. If you know, I mean, if the law is implemented, the trademarks act is implemented, the drug regulator does its job. Mm-hmm. I mean, the easiest thing is for the drug regulator to simply do a control F on the file whichever exists. and to see whether the same uh, drugs you know the same name or same trade name exist or not murli uh, uh, you know coming to you for the last word where do you see the solution of this practical so, so i said i've been a fan of uh, doctors writing generic names my first paper was published in 2015 on this mm-hmm. uh, there is a problem also with that i have seen which we haven't spoken about is colors so mm-hmm. similar colored you take inhalers for example if we can just have a standardization for the drug in an inhaler mm-hmm. we won't have a problem so in a when so, so by standardization you mean you mean for example a purple color inhaler mm-hmm. is to be used only okay. in emergency the blue mm-hmm. color inhaler is to be used chronically every morning mm-hmm. you take it but in mm-hmm. an emergency you use the purple color inhaler so all the emergency inhaler should be made in purple color and all the regular use inhaler should be made in say blue color in blue or green or yeah, whatever, whatever other color yeah. so depending yeah. on which drug it is mm-hmm. not depending on which color which brand and which company it is I depending on which drug it is mm-hmm. you standardize inhalers it's a simple okay. thing to do yeah. and there aren't that many so it is not mm-hmm. as if you have to create some 20 patterns with 12 colors that is not the problem so you mm-hmm. can work out what is required mm-hmm. and these are really important because people use that in emergency using it for a little uh, child for example you mm-hmm. using it for people who cannot read and write using it for people who are in distress at that time so they mm-hmm. reach for it and then inhale and yeah. it may not do them any good so even simple things like this where colors the way we label what we say on it little things can go really a long way in solving a large number of problems i'm not saying it will solve all problems mm-hmm. but a large number of problems will be solved by this and mm. so little effort big impact these are the two things we can do thank you so much uh, both of you for taking out time uh, and you know we look forward that your paper should create some more awareness among policy makers as well as doctors and patients thank you so much